Hey everybody, I just figured I'd throw this video together for anyone that was interested. I know in the past, when communicating grades with parents, they've always preferred to have it emailed to them, like my old gradebook program used to do. And they preferred that over going to a parent portal because they have to remember a site, a username, and a password, and so forth. So this was always easier for them because it got dropped right into their mailbox so they can check it on their phone, their tablets, their computers, and they didn't have to remember anything. So what I've done is I've figured out a way to merge or use School Tool and Google Sheets to send out automated, customized emails to mom, dad, student, or support staff and even translate email messages into languages such as Spanish for those who don't speak English all that well or at all. So if you're interested in doing this, the first thing you have to do is you have to open up a, a Gmail account or some sort of Google account. Now everybody in our district has a Google Schools account whether you know it or not. Most people don't, so here's your introduction to it. Your login is going to be your last name, which is the first part, at ehschools.org. Now, once you get there, if you've never opened this up before, then your default password is going to be our district mascot. And then once you do that, they'll ask you to create your own unique password. All right. So once you log into Google, what's going to happen is when you log into the first page, you're going to come to the search page most likely. And what you'll see is that next to all this in information like mail, images, and so forth, you're going to see like this box made up of nine little boxes. And when you click on that, these are your apps. And what you want to do is you want to click on Google Drive. So when you click on Google Drive, Google Drive is like your hard drive in cyberspace. So imagine your C drive on your computer where you save everything up on the internet and now you can access it anywhere. So any school information or lessons or materials you need, you can throw up here on the cloud. Now once you get into your Google Drive, what you do is you click New and then you go down to Google Sheets and you click on that. And what that will do is it'll open up a blank spreadsheet for you. And now you're ready to set up your spreadsheet. So before you get started on setting it up, you want to figure out or think about what it is that you want to include in your email or even any personal information that you'd rather have on the sheet. So for example, I have student last name, first name, their class period, language code, which I'll talk about a little bit later, class, so what subject I have them for, because sometimes I'll teach multiple ones, um, email, then I have parent information. I have parent's name for mom. I have mom's email address, dad's name, and dad's email address. Now, if you're wondering how to get this information, the parent name and emails, you can actually go into school tool and get it from there. So all you have to do is click on your roster, and then when you click on your roster next to your students' names, you'll see like a purple triangle. You click on that, and that should bring up all their contact information. And at the bottom where it says parents, um, or contacts, you'll see where the parents' names are and their information. And if the name has a little envelope next to the next to it, then that's a, that says they have an email address. So you click on that, and it'll open up another window. Once you do that, and you can also include support staff. So if a student is a resource room student or inclusion student, you can have them in there. If, if their student is an e ENL student, you can have the teacher name in here as well, and then put their support staff email. So all this is customizable to what you would rather have in there. You don't have to have all this stuff in here. Classroom status, don't worry about it. That's just a junk column left over from a script I ran before. And then here's the information I want to include in my progress report. Class average, test average, homework average, lab average average, quiz average, and I can even list the assignments that they have here. So once you get this database started, it'll take some time. It's going to take a big chunk of time, so don't expect to do this in like a half an hour or so. Probably take a couple of afternoons, get it all set up. But once you do, then again, the front-loaded work, the payoff, is worth it compared to the amount of time you put in. So now that you have your database all set up and ready to go, what you have to do is you have to go to add-ons and click on add-ons and go down to where it says get add-ons. You click on that and it's going to bring you to like an app store and the app that you want to get or the script I should say, not app, is called Form Mule. And you want to look for the black and white donkey or mule in the picture here by New Visions for Public Schools. And then you click to add to Chrome and or add extension or free. It says where it says free. So click on that and it'll download it into your uh, add-on folder. And what this is, this is called an email merge utility. Based on the type of message I'm going to write, it's going to plug in any information I have in these columns that I choose for however many kids I have. I have two kids here, but if I have 200 kids, it'll do for 200 kids. And 
just put all the information in there to customize the email for that one student. So I'll show you how to do that right now. So once you get your add-on for Formula in there, when you go over for the first time, we'll say launch. Since I've run this before, it's a setup for me. So you'll see launch. And then you have to go to choose source data and set merge type. So once you do that, you have to pick this sheet that your information is coming off of. So just take a look at the bottom over here and see what the name of the tab is. This is master list. So I want to make sure I choose master list that has all my information. So I go over here and in the drop down, click this drop down. It's going to give me a list of sheets that it has on the bottom. And that's what I want to use. I'm going to find master list, click on that and choose it. Now you can ignore the form trigger, that's for something different. You could use a time trigger if you like, if you don't want to keep going on here and manually sending them out. You can set your email script to send it out automatically, either on a daily, hourly, weekly, or monthly timer. I chose weekly because I like to send out progress reports once a week. And you could choose the day and the time and then update the time trigger. So according to this time trigger here, every week on Monday, at between midnight and 1 a.m., it's gonna send out an updated email to everybody I want it to go out to. So I don't even have to think about it. I just have to update the spreadsheet and that's it. But for now, I'm gonna turn this off, okay? I just changed it to template one because I want, kind of want to start from a blank one. You're gonna choose one unique template. I don't know how to do, use multiple ones at the same time. And then you're gonna choose send for all rows because it's gonna work for every single row you have on this list that has information on it. And then once you do that, you can do save template settings. Now, before you do that, you can always change this to something that you'll remember because you'll have to refer back to this later if you're gonna do this multiple times. And this way you can re you don't have to keep retyping or re-entering the message that you want. But there's a couple of cheats around that. So anyways, uh, we'll save template settings. And then we're gonna go edit our template. Now, this is where you're gonna build your email message. And like I said before, your first row is really important in what you list up there because now what happens is this first row becomes this column here and these are your add merge tags. Essentially, each tag is the title of a column and whichever tag you put in, that's gonna draw or pull the information from that column and dump it into your email. So let me show you, first of all, you have to do the two, so you have to send it to somebody that's required in a subject. What I like to do is this. I like to send it to the parents, so I have mom's email, and if I have dad's email, I'm gonna send it to dad, and I'm gonna send it to support staff too, so they're in the loop. And also, I'm gonna send it to the kid, but I'm gonna send it to the kid in the carbon copy. Why? Because if the parent asks the kid, um, why you fail in class, and they say, well, Mr. Fox didn't tell me, or Mrs. So-and-so didn't tell me I was failing, then here on this message, they're gonna get carbon copied, and everybody sees who's on the carbon copy. And then what you wanna do is you wanna put in your subject. Now, you could put in a basic subject like, progress report and it'll look like this in the subject line but this is where the fun I guess happens with the merge tags now if I wanted to make it personalized what I can do is I can click first name and what that's what's that gonna do is it's going to insert the first name of any kid in that first name column so here's your first name column here so the two emails that it's gonna send out is gonna personalize it for Tulula and Joaquin um, I'm gonna put apostrophe S to show possession and now if we take a look it says Tallulah's progress report so now it's Tallulah's and then if I want to go to Joaquin's I have Joaquin's progress report that's basically the intro on how to use your merge tags and here at the top you can see who it's going out to so it's going to show you all the email addresses in addition to that if you want a no reply if this is just a one-way message that you want to send out and have no reply come back to you you can type no reply into this reply to box or if you are fine or want them to reply back to you if they need to then you just put in your email address that you want to be contacted at so i use my eh schools one all the time now what i want to do is i want to build the body of my email and to do that this is going to be the message that you want and this is going to be the message that you're going to create and this is where you're going to add all the stuff to personalize it so i can write something such as hi there this is, and again, since I'm sending it to different students and I want to personalize it, I'm going to put the kid's name in there. So I'm going to go to first name, add the first name tag in there. Okay. And this is first names progress report. Four, and I want to say what class it is in case I'm teaching seventh grade or regents or regular science eight. I'm going to designate which class it is so they know what class it's for and they know who I am. 
and I'm gonna put down class. So if I go to preview, it's gonna be a little clunky here and I'll show you how to clean it up in a minute. Now it's gonna say this is first name Joaquin's progress report for class science eight. So when we did the add or the merge tags, you'll notice that it says first name colon and then the data set. Okay, so the actual name. So this would actually be Joaquin in there, and this would be Science 8 in the actual message. So if you want to clean it up, you have to get rid of the label outside of the carrots. So once you do that, and you preview it, now it looks a lot cleaner. This is Joaquin's progress report for Science 8. And then you just go in and add anything you want, okay? The averages for this class are as follows. And then what you want to do, if you want to, is include the averages. So remember, I had that those titles at the top, like homework average and lab average. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to find my averages on the merge tag list, and I'm going to click them and put them in. I'm going to put in test average. I'm going to put in homework average, lab average, and quiz average. Now I'm going to leave my labels in only because now the values in the carrots are going to be numbers and these are going to label those numbers. So if you take a look, that's what this looks like. It says test average and the value in the carrots is now the 95, which is the test average for the student. And again, if we take a look here, all that information is customized for each student as well. So here's Tallulah's fake information and then we saw Joaquin's. All right, and then you just continue to go on and you edit your message. So we might want to write something like here are, let's say, Joaquin's assignments and grades. And then all you want to do is go down and find your merge tags for each one of those assignments. So here's a homework assignment. And always hit enter after you click one because it'll just make it neater and cleaner. Lab, test, and classwork. Okay, so now it's going to give me a list of their information. And again, that information is coming from the title and it's just pulling the numbers that match up with the names of the student. All right, so once we get back to that, you can then write something general like Keens, again, get rid of that tag. Class average is, and I want to go down and see my class average one. And I'm going to get rid of that tag again because the number value is in the carrots here or in the double brackets. So if I preview this, it's going to give me his class average, or Tallulah's class average is 91. And that's your basic one, but you can always mess around with other stuff that you want to put into it. One thing I suggest is this. Once you build a body for the message that you like, just as a, a fail-safe way or a backup, I'd copy and paste it, copy and paste this page here into a Google document. So as you can see, that's what I've done here. This is the body that I send out to my students now. Um, so every time I have to type in that message, I just come in here, copy and paste it into the template builder, and I'm good. All right, next thing. If you want to have it translated, then what you need to do is you need to add what's called a language code. All right, so in my spreadsheet earlier, I had a column called language code. And any language that Google Translate can translate, it'll translate it into that language for you. So for example, let's say Joaquin Perez's parents came into conferences. I realize they don't speak very much English. They needed someone to translate for them. So obviously an English report isn't going to be good for them. So based on the language code site, such as this one here that you can Google, here are all the two-letter language codes that you can put in. So if I wanted Spanish, there's Spanish there. So it's ES. So I go back into my vodcast. Uh, spreadsheet and since Joaquin's parents speak Spanish I put ES there now this is important because this is where the form is going to figure out who gets Spanish and who does not so let's go back to that if I just put ES here what it's going to do is it's going to blanket translate everybody so Tallulah Jones's parents who don't speak Spanish don't need a translated version but Joaquin needs it what you need to do is you have to take your merge tag okay here's your merge tag for language code that's what I named it because it was simple you can name it anything you want and I'm gonna put it in the language box down here 
So once I put that merge tag in there, it's going to read and detect who has the code and who does not and translate it appropriately. If I take a look at my preview and send all, it'll start to show me my preview emails that I can send out. So here's Tallulah's stuff going out to her parents. And here is Joaquin's stuff in English, but also in Spanish at the bottom as well. So now you have customized, translated, individualized progress reports for your students. And then you can send them out to multiple people at once. And if you use a time trigger, you could send them out automatically without having to do anything. That's going to set that up. And once you do that, all you have to do is you just have to hit send all. And it's going to send it out for you. Now you'll see on my screen, um, notification boxes pop up because these are all fake email addresses. And as you can hear, my phone's going off in the background. But when you do send it out, what you're going to see at the bottom or at the end of your spreadsheet is a template st uh, send status. So it shows you the date, time, who it's sent from, and where it went to in order to get this email out to the appropriate people. All right, so that explains how to set up your, your database table and your Google Sheet to send this all out. Now, how do you get the grades from school tool into this? Well, that's something completely different, so let's take a look at that now. So once you get into your grade book or your school tool homepage, you wanna to go to your grade book and you wanna to go to print. And when you go to print, instead of hitting the print option here, two icons to the right, actually, you have this, this icon for export this report. So you click on it, and usually it'll say PDF here, but here we're going to click the drop down and you'll see all your choices. And in your choices, the best choice that I found is the Microsoft Excel workbook data only. So I chose that and I'm going to export it. Now it's going to export all that information in your plan book into a spreadsheet. So what you just need to do is if you add new assignments, then you just go to where you added the new assignments in the spreadsheet. And here, for example, I have the video example assignment. So I click on it. I copy and paste it by either right clicking and hitting copy or I hit control C and then I end up copying it and I go back to my spreadsheet again and I want to add that assignment in so I go insert one to the right or left whatever one you prefer and then you copy it paste it rather and now you have your new assignment when you update this always remember you have to update your averages as well because Remember, this spreadsheet here is just showing text. It's not calculating anything. So when you update this, you need to update everything over here as well. So once we get that done and you've updated your homeworks and you updated your averages, now you have to go back and update your script. Now, if you go back and you forget the name of your script, what you want to do is you want to click on this button down here and it's going to show you your hidden uh, templates that you used. All right, so we did template one. So that's the one I want to type in. So if I come back up to here and for whatever reason, maybe you went away for a while or closed this down and opened it back up and it doesn't by default choose your template one that you named or whatever you named it. So let's say I change this to fake template. When you go to that, Formula is not going to be able to recognize it. It doesn't know f fake template at all because there's nothing in it. So you're going to have a blank email space here. So you just want to go back. And you want to make sure if you don't for, if you forgot what that name was, you go and click down here to see which one it was. I said template one earlier. I'm just going to go to Formula, set up, set my template, and I'm going to type in template one. Hit save. And now Formula is reading template one down here. And once it reads it, it's going to fill in all the information that we set up earlier. And there it is. And now all I have to do is just edit it. So I wanted to include that one extra homework assignment that I put into the grade book. So I'm going to go down and there it is in my add merge tags, the video assignment example. And I click on it. I hit preview this. And as you can see, there it is updated. And of course, when you update your average values, those will go up as well. And once you get everything all set, again, you hit preview and send all and it goes out to your parents. And they're all happy because it's in their phones and they don't have to log in any place. That's how you can use School Tool and Google Sheets to send out your individualized, customized, itemized, and or translated reports to parents, students, and teachers with a click of a button. Not even if you use a time trigger. So I hope you found this helpful and you know, hope you find it useful. All right, thank you so much.